Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be reviewing another book for you today and the book that I have chosen is one of the Pagan Portal books and it's The Hour When Alone, Walking the Path of a Solitary Druid by Joanna van der... Oh, I think it's Hoven. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it but that's how it's spelled. Um, it was a book that I've received as a Secret Santa from last year from one of my work colleagues. It was one that I wanted to read and I was going to get it on the Kindle um, but I got it given to me instead so that was quite a nice surprise. Um, I love the book. It didn't take me very long to read it because it is quite a small book. It's not very big. It covers the basics of druidism, walking a solitary path as a druid and how to kind of incorporate that into your path. So whether you want to follow a druid path or you want to incorporate it into your own kind of eclectic beliefs um, and traditions which is probably what I would do. Um, it's definitely one to have a read. It's given me a a bigger interest in um, Druidism. It's not something that I've ever really looked into before. Um, I've not really kind of looked into Celtic mythology or anything like that. But this book definitely sparked my interest in it and it's something that I want to read more into. So if you do know of any other books that will give me any more information on Druidism or anything that's to do with that then that would be fantastic. If you could leave it in the comment below that would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so the book itself is split into three sections. So the first one is the basics of druids. So it goes through the brief history of what is druidry. It goes through our one, which is a, a term that I've not heard of before, strangely enough, you know, before I come across this book. Um, it goes through some of the gods, the ancestors, and it also goes through the festivals as a druid that you would practice or celebrate for. Uh, your second section is druidry in practice, so meditation, prayer, inner and outer path working and um, creating your altar how to set it up your sacred space and what you would use that for the seasonal rites to do with the sabbaths and obviously as the season changes and um, craft names it also goes through in there and then your third, third section is creating your own path so it is helping you design a druid ritual what a daily practice could look like if you wanted to do that um, and walking your own path so it's kind of drawing on the experience of the author of how you can do your own druid path and um, like i said it, there's not a lot of information it doesn't delve deep into it because it is a pagan parcel it is an introduction book but it, it, it did its job it got me interested and i did want to read more i love the beginning of the book the first few pages literally that amount there um is the introduction from the author so they show you what their day looks like from literally when they wake up and the alarm goes off in the morning to get themselves ready for work, to going to work, doing some um, meditations and then coming home um, and what it looks like for them to kind of come home and relax and just what their day as an actual druid looks like, which I don't think a lot of books actually kind of go through step by step. And it's kind of made me think of different things that I could do to bring my spirituality into my day to day. So that was really, really good to read. Um, section one, like I said, it goes through the basics. It goes through the history. It goes through who the Celts were. Um, it goes through the different um, gods and goddesses that are associated with Druidry. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in that chapter because it doesn't actually physically mention many deities that's in this. Um, who was it that was mentioned? I can't remember. I think it was literally Bridget or somebody else that was mentioned. And it was even like Nordic. I think Odin was mentioned in it as well. So there weren't many kind of deities that were actually um, mentioned within that chapter itself. And um, so I wouldn't kind of use it as a this is what goddesses or gods you should be looking at to. Um, delve into Druidism. Um, it goes through the Arwen which like I said is a term that I've not really heard of before. Um, it, it actually reminded me a little bit of Avatar and so I, the way that I kind of interpret Arwen is the same way as what it is in Avatar. Um, it's, it's definitely something I want to look more into and it makes a lot of sense for me kind of the idea that there's this kind of energy that's all around us it's definitely part of something that's on my path even if I've not really realised it before. Um, it goes through ancestors um, which has become really key for me recently. Um, I have recently inherited a box from my maternal side of the family and it's had a lot of 
um, spiritual activity around it, if you like. Um, I believe that I've had some kind of spiritual connections with my ancestors through this box. I'm just trying to find out more about them, found, tracing their family tree and kind of connecting with my ancestors in that way, especially around um, when it was sewing time. So I quite enjoyed reading that. Um, it goes through the eight festivals of the year, which is obviously what I'm already celebrating anyway. Um, this person lives in the UK, so kind of her experiences is what I've also experienced. Um, so it makes it a bit easier to kind of relate to the book. Some of the books that I read is based in like America or Australia. Um, and especially if it's Australia, obviously it's flips. It's a different way of experiencing the Sabbath. It's at like the opposite time of the year to me. Um, and America has got a completely different climate to what it has here in the UK. So I really did enjoy reading that. Um, the chapters on kind of daily prayer meditation. It, again, it got me thinking of how to um, incorporate just like a daily practice into my spiritual path already. Um, so it's kind of got me thinking of ways of doing that. Um, but it also got me thinking of mindfulness and it's gotten, it's actually got me to practice more um, of my mindfulness, which is something that I use when I'm suffering with um, anxiety or depression, which I've I had it in the past. And I was actually recommended to have a look at mindfulness by my doctor. Um, so that's kind of something that sparked an interest for me and just the idea of even a walking meditation um, it's something that I've done without realising that I've done it which is what a lot of this book has kind of told me a lot of the things that I have been doing already on my path are the things that I already believe in is mentioned in this book and it's giving it a name so it was almost like a, a coming home sense for me for this book so I definitely wanted to look more into Druidism and um, like I said, Celtic isn't something that I've looked into previously. I've always been drawn to Greek or Egyptian. So Celtic has kind of pushed to the wayside a little bit. Um, but it's something that I want to start looking at now because it's starting to spark my interest, like at getting different um, goddesses that are coming through that's from a Celtic pantheon um, that are kind of sparking my interest and I want to know more about them. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's any kind of ritual spell works in here. It goes through how to set up your own ritual um, and kind of um, how to cast your circle, how to consecrate, um, an invocation of calling on the ancestors. And it gives you a little bit of an information of um, kind of things that you can say or do at the ritual. It's literally about three pages long. There's not much information in terms of spell work or anything like that. It's more of a um, background, again, a, a basic introduction into being a solitary druid. So if you are interested in um, druidism or you want to learn more about something that you don't really know anything about, which was, um, get the book to go back, there you go, um, which was something that I was interested in, um, I would definitely give the book a read. Let me know what you think to it, because I was quite taken in by this book. I found it very, very easy to read. I have read some of the Pagan Portal books previously, and I enjoyed reading them. Um, at the same time as being given this, I did got um, the Pagan Portal book, The Morrigan, which I found harder to read, but I will talk about that in a separate video. So until next time, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye!